Well, hello, we are excited for our next talk, Dev Staging and Production and Data Engineering with Terraform uh, by Sarah Krasnick. And we're excited to have Sarah. Uh, she's a data engineer at Perpe, and I'm happy to hand it over to you. Great, thanks. Um, really excited to talk about basically how to support three environments in data engineering enabled by kind of infrastructure as code. So uh, with that, um, let's dive in. So uh, first, a little background on me. I lead data engineering at Perpe, which is a fintech company based in Philadelphia in the United States. Um, so I'm based out of uh, there as well. I, um, aside from kind of data engineering, I'm also an avid uh, tech blogger and just generally like to kind of keep up with uh, startups in the data space and kind of see uh, where the data and analytics space is kind of evolving. Um, with that, I'll kind of start by diving into uh, what does it even, why do people have three uh, environments being development, staging, and production, both in software engineering, um, and then kind of how does that translate to the analytics stack? Um, that'll kind of bring us to what testing means in the analytics world and specifically what testing data really entails. Um, and then lastly, diving into kind of the infrastructure side of things. What is Terraform? Um, how it enables kind of reliable, scalable, and kind of tested platforms in the data world. So many of you are likely familiar with kind of continuous integration tools um, like uh, GitHub that really enable uh, collaboration and kind of a group of people to uh, work on a single code base. Um, so different branches kind of correspond to uh, different levels of development, uh, testing, and accuracy. So to kind of break that down, we have, let's start with the master branch or the main branch or, you know, whatever your default on this call. This is the branch that of, of code that is the highest level of testing. It's gone through the highest level of testing. It's the most reliable, the most accurate. This is your production code. This has kind of downstream dependencies and that's what makes it production. So with uh, then we go to maybe a, a development branch or a staging branch, and sometimes this could kind of be conflated with the feature branch as well, but we have this kind of a, a release candidate, and this is where you might put up a pull request or kind of uh, uh, understand what is different between development master to uh, develop a new feature, and what you do here when you want to basically merge new things into production is you, you go and test it. Um, but before you even do that, right, you have feature branches. And these are uh, development branches. So software engineers, data engineers, anyone kind of interacting with GitHub and with the code that can make ch changes and submit them for review. And here you see that, right, we can have multiple people uh, working on different features at the same time. And uh, when you submit a pull request, that feature will be merged into kind of your, your staging branch. So in kind of in software engineering, this is a lot uh, better defined, but in, let's talk about data engineering. So the separation between these uh, branches gets trickier because the, the environment in data engineering, it's not just code, um, there's data involved, right? So in production, you're running a lot of maybe SQL transformations that connect to a data warehouse and that in this data warehouse, you're also, you're storing kind of third party data, whether that's accounting data, marketing data, any sort of third party tool, or even internally into from the organization, maybe a, a data from a, a kind of a core production database that's being put in a warehouse to kind of house it in one place. Um, on top of all of that, the code is running SQL transformations and writing back to, uh, to, to schemas or having views um, that are considered kind of the, the, the source of truth for metrics in, in, the in the organization. So with that said, um, kind of what might differentiate production um, in this environment? Well, production, as I mentioned before, kind of has downstream dependencies. So, in software, you have right an application production. It's deployed to your end users, to the consumers um, of your of your product. Um, but in internal analytics, your users are your stakeholders. So product managers, marketing leads, um, you know, really anyone that's looking at the output that might be, you know, for example, um, put inside of a, a dashboard. They look at these dashboards and look at these metrics to um, make decisions. So, for example. In the product manager's case, 
we um, let's say there's kind of a new product launch or a new feature launch, they might look at a dashboard to understand how the feature is performing, or maybe it's a, an A-B test to understand whether we should um, kind of roll back the A-B test or maybe roll it out to, to a larger population. But the, the purpose of the staging branch um, and environment is to, to test code to ensure it's ready for production, right? Because we mentioned that production is kind of your most tested, but in analytics, it's not just testing code. It's also testing data. You want to ensure that your outputs are comparable and the most thorough way to do that is to read production data so that the changes um, between a staging environment and a production environment is just the code that's being run. It's specifically the transformation, not the changes in the environment, right? So it's, you're not, um, you want to compare kind of apples to apples and you want to ensure that any differences that you see, you can be 100% sure that there are differences in the code that you made as opposed to, you know, potentially just being a difference in environments and you don't know which is which, but one is a problem that won't be fixed in production because that's that, that being the code and then the other would not persist in production. So you don't want to kind of accidentally assume those things, but in staging, right, where do you write to? You're not going to overwrite production data that like doesn't make any sense. You're testing these things and you want to test them in an environment that doesn't actually affect production. And more than that, things get, you know, the, the stakes get so much higher when it's not just dashboards. If you're operationalizing analytics, meaning you're sending data from your data warehouse to third party tools via reverse ETL um, with tools like Census and High Touch. Um, kind of there are there's so many things uh, at, at play here because you're sending data that is way more likely to be exposed to your uh, end user. It's not just internal. It could be right into a marketing tool that sends emails or into a sales tool that sends emails or into Shopify that is data that is exposed in your storefront. So you really want to make sure right before pushing into production that your data is formatted in a way that kind of complies with your reverse ETL integrations. Again, testing is the most important, right? It has here, it, it, it has the highest impact on stakeholders and, and customers, especially in a B2C product. So testing data, right? Let's jump again, right? We're making these parallels between software engineering and data engineering. So in the software engineering world, um, we have PyTest. It's in Python, an agreed upon fr framework for, for unit testing. Um, but in the data world, that's just, it gets you part of the way there, but it's just not enough because you could unit test code that you think you accounted for in all cases, but the, the data is telling you otherwise, right? You want to make sure that, um, you want to make sure that you're not dependent on right, changes upstream and data continuously changes, right? It updates, new things happen, time goes by, and you want to ensure that nothing, nothing changed upstream that would flow through downstream um, and uh, come off as, as bugs. So um, kind of Abe uh, Gong of Superconductive has really talked a lot about like pipeline tests. So making your dependencies run only if tests pass as specifically as part of your data pipeline. So let's say you have Raw data, you're piping into your data warehouse, you run a trans you run one transformation, then you run another transformation, and then you have these downstream dependencies that um, that feed dashboards. Um, well, if you run pipeline tests, that means before your data gets to a place where your dashboards kind of pull from, you run data, data quality tests and ensure that kind of what you expect is you validate what you expect is actually what's happening. And if that fails, you just don't push data through to dashboard. So your data is stale, but it's, um, uh, but it's not inaccurate or it's not buggy. So I won't kind of go into this too, too much, but this here is really specific to kind of testing your inputs and outputs. Um, and then your unit testing, right? It's testing code and business logic, but here testing data just adds a whole other uh, layer um, of quality. There are Kind of plenty of tools out there. I mean, I, I just mentioned great expectations, but there's kind of soda, data fold. I, I mean, a plenty of, of, of tools, only some of which I even, you know, listed here, but um, there's so many frameworks for observability, quality, and they are fundamentally different from software testing because they test data. So 
I'd argue that to do so effectively, you need a production-like environment so that you can ensure that you're replicating data and you're not making assumptions about what that underlying data looks like. So how exactly does that fit into kind of these, these branches that I talked about um, earlier kind of in code? So you, that means entirely storing your data entirely separately um, in, a, in, in, in a different warehouse or a different database within the same warehouse. But the point is that you wanna have this separation between uh, production and staging. And with production, right, third party data, you want it to, to write to both of these places so that you can replicate production in a staging environment that doesn't have downstream dependencies where business decisions aren't being made on top of that data. Um, you want to be able to replicate it as close as possible. So again, this kind of, I talked about like an apples to apples comparison, but it, it really um, kind of, that's what it boils down to. I mean, if you think about, right, uh, like science experiments in biology, chemistry, really any kind of experimental um, uh, field, you want to kind of limit the number of variables that you're testing, unless you're testing interaction between two things, maybe. Um, but uh, it's kind of the same, take that same principle and add it here that the only thing that you change you want to try to change one thing at a time, right? So if you change the, the, the code and you're trying to test maybe your, fee, your feature branch A, right? You're trying to test a feature branch or test a staging environment as it compares to production. It's a lot easier if only one thing is changing being the code as opposed to having to think about, well, is it just my staging data set that's, that's maybe not encompassing of all these different use cases? Um, is it lagging? Is there something else going on? Um, it kind of takes that out of the equation um, completely. So we talked about staging, right? Um, so having like a completely functionally separate data source that kind of mocks, that, that mimics uh, production as close as possible. But speaking to kind of feature branches, Similarly, each person could, um, you know, read from the production where warehouse and kind of have their own um, development schema to play around in so that, again, we're not writing to production and uh, uh, hopefully that is kind of guarded by, um, you know, uh, permissions and um, the, the, everything that is done by kind of in a development environment in exploration is just, is just functionally separate. So, right, in both software and data engineering, like infrastructure matters, right? We're keeping things functionally, functionally separate. Hopefully I've kind of gotten that, gotten that point across and kind of convinced you of, of the importance of that, but how your warehouse is deployed, right? All of the security around it, your, your testing frameworks, your cloud infrastructure for machine learning, um, kind of everything that plays into that, um, it, it, it matters. And, what if kind of you need to make a change? Um, deploying a new um, machine learning model and let's say, right, there's a new model, it's much more computationally intensive, it has, um, uh, it stresses your warehouse a little bit more and you need to understand, right, will it impact other, other queries? What do you need to do? Maybe it's more memory intensive, kind of, there can be a whole host of things, but the last thing that you wanna do is impact production workloads if the model reads from the data warehouse that is the production data warehouse. So testing this new code involves changing um, and hopefully therefore testing infrastructure. So if staging and production infrastructure is functionally is, is separate, then that involves, right, we can test the infrastructure. We can push the bounds of staging, seeing what, what it can handle and kind of being as most, you know, being most efficient with our costs to not over provision. So we don't kind of have to pay for those resources. But similarly, um, we can have all of that testing in, in, in staging uh, as well. And again, hopefully those environments are as similar as can be from an infrastructure uh, standpoint as well. So data platforms, right, have, have grown in complexity. Um, they're kind of more sophisticated than they were one, two, five years ago, um, while being able to provide kind of better tools for, uh, for, for data quality um, for your stakeholders, right? The higher the quality, the more trust there is um, in, in data and the better decisions that you're making because you're making them on things that are actually um, accurate. But with this kind of complexity means 
more, more tools, more moving parts. And I just mentioned, right, having like two different um, environments and kind of a silo, almost like partially a third environment in terms of like some sort of development, that can be a lot, a, a lot to handle, especially right, highlighting everything that's, that's, that could be considered infrastructure like that, that you have to duplicate. Um, that, that's a lot. <laughs> um, like functionally separate means duplicated. And uh, before I kind of dive into how to make this happen, right, I'd like to make a comment here that it's a lot of the questions when I talk about different environments, especially from a data world, uh, especially in the data world, um, the question of, of like pricing comes up. And so, uh, yeah, you, you, could, uh, you could kind of close to double the cost of your infrastructure um, by kind of setting up these two environments. I think that's, that's kind of coming off this of what's gonna happen here, but I would kind of, uh, anyone that's kind of doubting the, the need for that, I would uh, compare that to the cost of making a wrong decision that harms your business or not being able to run certain tests where you're pushing out information to decision makers that make decisions on products that impact your end customers, those the the cost and risk of that um, I, I would argue is is much much greater. So, going back to kind of the the infrastructure side of things, um, you know you, you want to test um, in staging as well and test those test everything downstream. So that's why kind of you need this whole uh, uh, line of all of this infrastructure. So. How do you how do you automate this and uh, make it repeatable, right? If I personally, as a data engineer, like if I have to do anything twice, I'd uh, would much prefer instead of doing it manually to try to code it so that it can be done a third, or fourth, fifth time if needed. And this is where um, kind of the I'll introduce kind of the concept of infrastructure as code. So it's exactly what it sounds like. Um, you know, define your infrastructure in code um, and that code can be versioned in GitHub just like your transformation code in SQL, just like your Python code. And this kind of allows for a few things. Um, the first is repeatability. Uh, you can copy your code, you can deploy it to staging, you can deploy it to production, um, and you can also destroy your, your infrastructure and recreate it, right? And I'd be remiss not to mention um, Tristan Handy's talk, who's the CEO of DBT Labs um, a few weeks ago at the Future of Data uh, conference about how kind of infrastructure as code can truly enable the, the modern data experience. And he mentioned something that's really important, kind of a, a common theme in uh, DevOps, which is treating your infrastructure as cattle and not as pets. And what I mean by that is um, you want to uh, make it repeatable. You want to, you don't want to be, you know, you're hard tied to a server that if something goes wrong, you're spending a lot of time um, you know, trying to fix it, so on and so forth. And instead, right, you don't want to clog your production environment with code or infrastructure that belongs to feature branches. That production environment could be Looker, right? That just has these dashboards that you thought you might use someday, but you're just afraid to destroy. Um, from the infrastructure, infrastructure side of things, if things are coded, you can destroy them, knowing that if they're just, if that code is just stored in a branch, you can very easily recreate them if uh, there is a use for that down the line. So kind of thinking broadly here, this doesn't have to be just kind of the common things that you think of as infrastructure being like your warehouse. It could be, what if it was all your mappings from your warehouse to your um, kind of operational tooling in the, in the reverse CTL uh, SaaS tool that you use? It could be dashboards, kind of you, you name it. So how does like Terraform actually work. So a lot of software tools um, and cloud tools like in you know, AWS, GCP, Azure, kind of the big three are supported. So that could be um, databases, virtual machines, um, security groups, everything that, you know, all of the security groups and like roles and stuff that everyone always struggles with, that's all um, supported as, as, as decla it's very declarative. So declaring resources as code. Now, Setting this up um, kind of on, a, on, on your computer, you can run a terminal command to launch all of this infrastructure and just as easily run a terminal command um, to right, first code a change and then run a command to apply the change. Or right, if you no longer need it, destroy all that infrastructure, being able to very quickly recreate it again. So kind of here in, right, you could think, okay, well, how does this 
kind of apply to uh, the, the data workflow as opposed to the software engineering workflow. And I'd like to point out kind of, imagine if there was, right, your entire data platform from raw data to ETL to um, warehouse to transformation to metrics to reverse ETL um, and, and beyond, right? What if you could, what if all of that and all of that configuration could be set up as code? So you could launch um, DBT in the cloud um, as well as your, as your Snowflake database and you can code all your ETL mappings in Fivetran so that you can write this data to both staging and production without manually redoing them and accidentally missing something. Now, taking a step further, let's talk about BI. So, right, all your looker sources, look ML, dashboards, like translate them to code and you can kind of um, uh, launch everything all at once and you can store all the dependencies between the different tools in your data platform as well. So something that kind of isn't shown here are kind of third party tools that um, uh, the third party tools for, you know, like reverse ETL processes, for example. Um, Airbyte has already written about kind of deploying ETL and reverse ETL and Terraform, um, I believe, inside a virtual machine. But I think that, you know, the future, um, uh, I believe, is third party tools supporting these Terraform providers so that you can integrate your data platform um, as easily as possible. So where does that kind of get us? It gets us to a data platform that is repeatable, that is testable. Um, deleting dashboards doesn't mean they're gone forever and they make your data platform clean. And you can easily support multiple environments to ensure the scale and quality of your uh, data products. So I'll kind of leave you with, with a few things. Um, between different environments in testing right before production, you always want to be comparing apples to apples to ensure you don't make assumptions on accident. Um, just like you limit experiments to one variable, limit testing to just the code and not environment, environment differences or just the infrastructure and not the code. Now, testing on full data sets ensure, ensures you also don't miss edge cases that you may not have accounted for and sort of like mock data that, that you might um, be inclined to, to have. Setting up your environments as code allows for these changes um, to, to, be, to be repeatable and that you ensure that your staging environment is as production-like as you can get it. And lastly, this all kind of really enables better uh, testing, coordination, integration, and building trust in your data organization um, to help your whole business make um, kind of data-driven decisions and kind of operationalize as much uh, data as possible. And uh, the last thing I want to mention is just a shout out to uh, my coworker and software engineer, Derek, who um, has really uh, pioneered kind of Terraform at, uh, at Perpe. And, um, you know, there's been so much collaboration between analytics and engineering. And uh, hopefully that inspires others to, to collaborate as well. And uh, now it's time for questions. So thanks, everyone. Yes, thank you so much. Uh, we definitely have a few minutes so we can answer some questions, uh, which you can either put in the Q&A function or uh, post them to chat. Um, I can, looking at the chat from the talk uh, about you know 10 minutes ago, there's a question about duplicating warehouses uh, and the cost of it. Um, the question was like whether uh, a full replica of the, of the Pride Warehouse uh, for staging, would that double the storage cost? And is that just the cost of business or is there um, something we could do about like sampling or subsetting? Yeah, it's a great question. I think that, you know, I think partially it is the cost of business, but I think you can get smart about it. So for example, um, uh, if you are a business that is, that is uh, 10 years old, I really doubt that it's um, worth uh, having all 10 years um, of data uh, between production and staging. It could be enough just to have six months or one year. And if you're launching a new product, then um, you know, that's only going to be forward looking. So sampling and just making sure that um, your tests are written in such a way that uh, both in production and in staging, you can compare only the last year's uh, worth of data so that uh, you really do, uh, you know, make it apples to apples. You're just kind of smart about not duplicating. So there's certainly things, um, there's certainly things that you can do there. The only other comment that I'll make is, um, I think that uh, you know having infrastructure that is separate is important. So even if you have a completely separate data warehouse or database, right? I think that's really important. Even if you don't duplicate um, 
all of history if you do have a long history of your company. And then there, the, I think there's a follow up question to that uh, similar, like what about the streaming data sources? Yeah, the streaming data is, um, I, I think that's that's really interesting. Um, it's definitely a lot uh, harder to replicate, but um, in that case, um, I think a good, because that space is so new, I think it's kind of harder to um, rather not new, but not as explored in kind of the modern data stack as people call it. I think there's kind of a lot to be figured out in terms of how to, to test streaming data. Um, it might be a good, I think that's a great case where unit testing, right, um, is really important in, in Python and mocking um, because uh, it does change um, between production and staging. But what I will say is trying to understand if there are um, staging or test environments upstream. So at least you can test your streams, even if they aren't um, exactly the same data as production would be kind of my, my first approach. Great. Uh, well, we had a question asking, what if your production data is regulated? The examples being HIPAA or customer NDAs. Yeah, um, so the approach that I've kind of taken is all of the same regulations that apply in production apply in staging, right? All of the same permissions. If s someone doesn't have access to something in production, they shouldn't have access to it in staging. Um, and so I think all of that uh, compliance kind of still still holds. But of course, um, I mean, per pay, we're kind of in a uh, in the financial space. There's obviously kind of uh, uh, regulations that that make it kind of tricky, and so. Uh, Definitely keeping that in mind when replicating data and making sure that um, all the security between between warehouses when you take data out of your um, you know out of your network that there is all that same security in place. So it, from that perspective, it can also be an overhead in terms of like maintaining those two environments. Um, but I do think that um, it, it has a lot of benefits as well. Great. Uh, next question: Would you recommend using Ansible or TerraGrunt to facilitate Terraform? Um, I have actually not used Ansible before, and I'm only, um, I'm somewhat familiar with TerraGrunt, so don't know that I can make a recommendation between the two. I would have to do more research, but um, I kind of use Terraform as uh, in, you know, an example. There's even other tools like Bloomy, um, which is like Python um, infrastructure as code. So I, I think, you know, the, the concept is, is, is what matters. Yeah, we, we did have a comment that says Ansible and Terraform work very well together. That's good feedback, thank you. I think that's it. Thank you very much. We really appreciate the talk. Thank you so much.